This week the Delta showed its true potential and some of the recent tournaments have produced some really heavyweight bags. Along with the river showing its true potential, it's also showed how stubborn it can be and I'm one of those people that has showed how stubborn it can be too this week. So before we get into the report, let's take a, a, a look at some of the pictures that came in this week for some of the people that the Delta actually showed its potential to. Let's check out these pictures and we'll get into the report. Thanks for joining me again and today is the In Deep on the Delta fishing report for the week of August 15th and I have to start off with an apology and I apologize to everyone that uh, sent in their, their pictures from last week and uh, sent in any information that I, I should have been uh, talking about on the weekly business. After I uploaded my video last week I, I checked it and uh, I must have cut off all the pictures and all of the portion the first portion of the show that I usually do the river business so I apologize to you guys it won't happen again the Mike Vaughn classic coming up uh, the 12th Mike Vaughn classic tournament out at Lads it's going to be this Sunday the 18th and this is a it's a friendly tournament it's not only a good tournament to fish but even if you don't fish it you guys got to come out to lads and watch the way it's just a good place to go out and meet some some of the great uh, personalities that that fish out here on the delta all the time a real friendly atmosphere and you guys will have a good time i'm going to be out there so if you happen to come out there and you see me make sure you stop by and say hi and give me a report maybe Give me some ideas on how you're catching some of these big fish out here. If you have any questions, you can call Tony at 916-470-6741 or you can call Reggie at 916-856-7190 and that is for the 12th annual Mike Vaughn Classic held out at Lads this Sunday the 18th. You know, let's get right into um, uh, the report. And I'll start off by, I'll tell you what, I've got to run up to the front of my boat to see what kind of water temperature I'm getting right now. I'll be right back. Whew! I'm getting, uh, in the, I'm, I'm at the duck pond now. I thought I'd be able to find some um, shade out here. About two feet of water, I'm getting 83 degree water temps. I've been getting closer to around 80, 78 to 80, and that's what most people are, are talking about. I've got um, water temps reports coming in from down south, out north, that have been as low as 70 three degrees in the morning but generally I think you could expect somewhere between 75 and 80 degrees. Water clarity uh, down south has been about two feet. Uh, the central delta has been around five feet and I'm sure the north delta up around Liberty has you know got its three to five feet also so rivers in good condition. You know, as far as the stripers go um, it seems like they're back for some reason and I guess it might have something to do with why I've been seeing the sea lions back in the system starting last week. They just suddenly appeared and as they appeared I also started getting reports of stripers. A lot of guys catching stripers in their uh, bycatch when they're fishing for uh, largemouth. But there's just not a lot of guys that I know that are out there really focusing on stripers. So we're just going to let it go with that. There are stripers in the system, but um, now is the time you, we all want to be fishing for bass, I think. Before we get into the actual report, I want to talk about some of the, um, the tournaments that have been coming off. And we're going to start off with not yesterday's uh, Wednesday nighter. I don't get the reports on that early enough, but last week's Wednesday nighter. Uh, a big congrats to, um, let's see, we had uh, John, John Vano and his tournament partner, Braden, won for the second straight week. This week they had 27 and some change to win. Last week I, had, I think they had 25 or 26 to win. This week they not only produced a 27-pound bag, but there were several other 
bags over 20 pounds, three, four, five bags over 20 pounds for I think a 40 or 50 boat field. And um, I watched Caleb's report and everybody seemed to be happy with what they were catching. You know, 15, 16, 17 pounds didn't even cash a check. So Wednesday night was a good night to fish. With that, I want to talk a little bit about John Vano. You may recognize his name if you guys watch the channel. Uh, I guess about a week ago I loaded up a, a uh, video called The Donkey Slayer. John is, um, it, John is the man that produces the, the Donkey Slayer. He is the guy that designed it. And I can tell you this, the last two weeks, the Wednesday nighter with John and Braden, having a 25 pound bag and let's say a 27 pound bag. And I believe the 20, last week's bag, 27 pounds, was the largest bag of the season. Every one of those fish, except for maybe one, was caught on a donkey slayer. It's a, it's a chatterbait that John produces. If you want more information on that, check out my, my video, The Donkey Slayer. It gives you all the information you need to know. And I'll, I'll start off right off the bat telling you, this is not a cheap lure. Uh, you're not going to like the price of it, but I'll tell you what, you can't argue with the, um, uh, the results it's getting. That's The Donkey Slayer. So that was the uh, Wednesday night tournament. We had uh, Saturday, we had the BBT, and the top weights were really good, but this is where it's going to start to get interesting. First place was uh, 23.5 to win. They also had a 21-pound, 21.5, and 21.3 for second and third. Those are really good weights. Here's where it gets a little dicey. Mid-pack was about 12 pounds. That's not bad, but out of, I think there was something like 45 boats, something like that. 21 boats didn't weigh in, and a lot of boats that did weigh in had bags of, you know, five, six, seven pounds. So, again, the Delta is showing what it can do, but boy, if you're not in the right spot at the right time, it can, it can be very stubborn. Here's another um, example of what went on. The, um, the NorCal Bass, it was out uh, Sunday. Uh, my buddy Christian and his partner, Mark, I believe they had 27 pounds for first place. Big bag. I think there was, I don't know, 30 or 40 boats. Second place was 14 pounds. And you guys know, anybody knows that is familiar with the NorCal Bass Club, they've got some big sticks out there. The Rosettis were, were second, and I'm sure there were some guys, you know, with under 14 pounds that are capable of, you know, putting in a 25-pound bag any day out here. So the bottom line is, if you're not catching fish, if you're not catching big fish, you know, don't be too far down on yourself. It, this is a tough fishery and it takes a long time to learn and even the guys that know the fishery, and I'm going to put myself in that, uh, in that uh, group. We don't always catch fish. I've had, I don't know what's going on with, with me. I mean, I'm catching fish, but I, I guess I've forgotten how to catch the big fish. I don't know what's going on. I don't even have any good skills. So, I guess... For this week's report, I'll tell you what I've been doing, but I'm going to tell you how a lot of the people that have been catching the big fish have been getting them. And I really want to focus more on the guys that are in the middle of the pack and the guys that are having trouble out here. The guys that are catching the big fish, and I talked to Christian, he's getting a lot of topwater fish and he's getting a lot of worm fish. Uh, he's also getting some chatterbait fish. I know that he got uh, a lot of his big fish on a wobber plopper, and he's fishing central, south. I talked about John Vano, who had that big John and Braid, and they had a, a huge bag. They are primarily throwing chatterbaits, and they're throwing that donkey slayer, and that's producing big fish for them. I think a lot of the people that are uh, being successful in, in getting good numbers of fish along with some better fish, they're either looking for shade, Wind, if you can find a breeze. I'm out in the duck pond today, and as you can see, there's no breeze at all. And what I'm going to do when I leave here, I'm going to go out and I'm going to start running around. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop until I either find some shade or some breeze. And a lot of people are also fishing the flats. Some of them that are getting the big fish on the flats are throwing top water at low tide. You have only need a foot to maybe two feet of water. After the tide comes up, those flats aren't producing with the top waters. They'll produce with other stuff. That's when you start throwing the chatterbaits and, and um, worms through there and dragging, dragging whatever you can get through the vegetation. If you really want some fish, and, and 
for me, it's been the most consistent this last week, even though I haven't caught any fish over three pounds. I'm moving to the outsides of those flats. And the flats that I've been fishing are probably two or three cast off the bank. They're way the heck out there. I, I usually don't, when a flat's like that, I usually don't go out to the edge of it and start fishing. What I did the other day, uh, I was out with my son, and we saw what, what we thought were some small stripers, you know, way out, basically darn near in the middle. And um, no big deal, we weren't gonna fish for them, but we heard a couple of big, a big, you know, uh, big fish out there. We said, you know, maybe there's some stripers out, let's go out and see what happens. Threw out there, I got a big bite right away, didn't, didn't pick up, got another bite, didn't pick up. Third cast, I picked up about a two and a half pound bass. And I know that's not a big bass, but it gave Nathan and I uh, the idea that we're fishing in the wrong place. We're here fishing towards the bank. We should be pulled out 30 more feet and fishing out to the outside. So we started fishing way out uh, to the outside of the weed bed and, uh, or the weed line. And we ended up catching four or five fish in there in the next you know, 30, 40 minutes. And then that bite died off. But that gave us a pattern to build on. And I think for those of you who may, not, who may be running the banks and not catching fish, you wanna get out a little farther and especially when you get in if you pull in and there's that shallow snotty stuff or it's just too weedy for you before you leave get on your trolling motor and pull out to see how far that vegetation lasts and see where that drop off is and try throwing uh, again i'm throwing jerk baits out there and i've caught a couple of decent fish on jerk baits we've caught them on um, flukes are producing Worms are producing, and they're producing some big fish. Christian said he's been uh, picking up some big fish for his clients. And, and by the way, Christian, I think, um, uh, is done with his guiding here. He's heading back to uh, Minnesota for a big tournament. I'll try to keep you guys up on how Christian does on that. And uh, then I believe he's going to come back. And for you guys that are, are looking for uh, uh, a good guide, you might want to give uh, Christian a call when he gets back. I'll let you know when he's back. Maybe I'll have him on. He can talk about his experience uh, heading out to Minnesota. But back to the Delta, it's all over the board. Uh, Rob Cloutier, uh, sent in some pictures. He's been getting some big fish and I know Rob throws a chatterbait and, and I asked him what he was catching most of his big fish on. He talked about chatterbaits and worms. He has one picture that he sent me with um, uh, you know a uh, I believe it's a Rico and it had two fish on one bait. That doesn't happen a whole lot out here on the Delta especially if it's a topwater bait. Uh, but um, the, the morning and the evening bites have not been great for me catching some fish but they're small fish and generally when I get out real early or I stay out past dark I can depend on a couple of big bites and those big bites just haven't been there. Uh, so what I've been doing is, is changing my locations. I'm finding plenty of fish and everybody's catching fish but a lot of folks are, are talking about you know catching 30 or 40 fish and not even putting a keeper in the boat or putting only one or two keepers. That's the problem. So if you're having that problem I would say continue to move. You're going to still wade through a lot of small fish. Uh, change your tactics and fish deeper water out on the edges. Leave the bank, fish the edge uh, out in eight or ten feet of water and that's the edge of the vegetation. If you're going to fish the bank you want to throw frogs and punch. There are people catching uh, fish punching now and there's been some good fish being uh, caught on the punch in the last week or two. Frogs have always been producing. Um, my buddy Ted, Coach Ted, I'm going to have to have him on because uh, he was out with me a couple weeks ago. I showed him one of these donkey slayers and he, I think he ended up buying eight from John. He got, had his first day out uh, Tuesday and he caught four or five really nice fish on it. He was doing the same thing that we're talking about, taking these big chatter baits, throwing them out on the edge of the vegetation, anywhere from three to five feet of water and just running them through there. That's working for Ted. Dragon worms will work for you, but don't just stick to the same areas that you're fishing and fish the bank. Get offshore, especially right now if you can find points. Points are the number one place that I have been catching fish. I know a lot of people are talking about getting out and just fishing the points, but not fishing what you can see on the surface. Fishing what you can't see under the surface that's going out from the point. Uh, somebody have, sent in, they, I think they got, and in five minutes they caught five or six fish, you know, all three, four pounders on deep diving crankbaits out at the end of a point. 
you know, you got everything you need there. You got a point, you got water movement, you don't have shade, but generally there's a lot of uh, bait out there. Make sure you have bait. If, if you're in one of these areas where you just don't see any bait, get out of there and leave. I don't care if you got good vegetation, you got cover and everything else. There's no bait. Don't stay around there too long. It's just a, a matter of getting out there and having some fun. Uh, I've been going with lighter gear, so when I do catch a two, two and a half pound fish, uh, it's fun to catch. For you guys that uh, are sending in your reports, or especially your pictures, remember you can send them to scooper956 1032 at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching, and um, you know, let's, uh, let's get out here and break the code out here and uh, catch some fish. So uh, until next week, have a good time. See you guys on the water, and good luck.